Hi, I'm Lisa K. Donner, along with Andrew Moran, Sarah Cowgill, Graham Noble, and Dave Patterson. And this is the Conservative Five Liberty Nation's online TV news program. Well, the Unity president delivered his second State of the Union speech this past week. It was a real campaign speech. And according to Liberty Nation's managing editor, Mark Angelides, a timeless tirade, or should I say a themeless tirade. What did he accomplish? Was there unity or division created? Everyone in this panel has an opinion on Tuesday's themeless tirade. But I want to start with a man who does not have a dog in the fight. Andrew, what was your take from your perch in Toronto? Since you well, I'll say that I've been board. watching the State of the Address since I was a kid, and I always groan by the constant standing up and clapping. If you remove that, I'm sure these speeches could be cut in half. But, you know, as I wrote in my article, uh, the best way to summarize part, Joe Biden's there, address. There were some boos, too. Let me just say. Yeah, there were, yep, there were some boos. And uh, as I wrote in my article, uh, the best way to summarize Joe Biden's speech, it's from an old joke from the movie Annie Hall. And I'm sure uh, Dave will appreciate this. It says that I'm, unless I'm one of those guys with saliva dribbling out of his mouth who wanders into a cafeteria with a shopping bag screaming about socialism. But instead of screaming about socialism, Biden was howling about airline baggage fees. <laughs> and I'm sure my distinguished colleague will touch upon you know the very subjects but on the issue of economics there was so much that made me scratch my head it made me groan out loud and you know i don't want to dominate the conversation uh, as i usually do sometimes but i'll say i'll say a few of them the whole job <laughs> the whole job situation was misleading uh his idea that the fast food workers are signing non-compete agreements that's that was fascinating uh taxing <laughs> stock buybacks and having a billionaire wealth tax although he wants to hand them 250 billion dollars in taxpayer subsidies so everything that everything he was talking about is completely mind numbing to me. So, you know, he's he's one of my favorite presidents just because of all the gaffes he has. But that was David address it, compared to what MSNBC or CNN said. It was a terrible address. And uh, I'll leave it out to the floor. My colleagues. Well, discuss, uh, his who wants to pick up on this one? Our uh, my better half and our Liberty Nation senior political analyst, Tim Donner, could be heard groaning from the other room every time he heard the two <laughs> words fair share. Fair <laughs> share. Anybody have? Anybody here not paying their fair share? Anybody want well, to pick up? I, I will. I will say, Lisa, that actually, uh, considering that a, around about half of the nation, um, and I believe it's either a little more, either a little less than half of Americans, or a little more than half of Americans, are not paying income taxes. And so, therefore, if we're going to talk about fair share, then yes, let's start with all the people who are not paying anything in at all and uh, decide what their fair share is. You know, my personal view is that there is a there is a tax system out there that, that we should employ um, in place of all the current taxes we have, and that would make sure that everyone indeed paid their so-called fair share. Sarah, you know, every time you hear a Democrat speak, two things come out of their mouth. The rich people need to be taxed more, and the Republicans are going to get rid of Social Security and welfare and Medicare. Oh, no. I don't get it. You know, that's that hasn't even been brought up since the 80s. I don't know where they're coming up with that that party line. But every liberal that I know it, it says that, well, you know, they're well, going to take away so our Medicare people. and Social Security. And it's like, no. But, you know, he his speech didn't make any sense to me. But you know, it's not going to make sense to a lot of logical thinking people. But it just it was like. No, you didn't do that. No, you didn't do that. And I'm pretty sure you didn't do that. And the one thing that everybody should notice about this man is he is entirely out of touch with the people who are suffering under his administration's policies. He's out of touch. He can afford a dozen eggs. People here are scrambling for that. Um, you know, if you don't have a chicken or if you don't know somebody with a bunch of chickens, you know, eggs are seven bucks a, a dozen. I was just talking to somebody this morning. She said she was in the grocery store aisle. And they were standing next to the eggs, and this lady looked down at her and said, I'm trying to decide if I can afford to eat today. Yeah. And, you know, you think about it, and it's not so funny if you're on a fixed income. It is not. And I don't understand why those people on a fixed income, um, the liberals who voted for this man, um, they complain. They want to, you know, well, our, our income needs to go up. And I'm like, well, it's on fixed. I mean, what do you think? And, and just because... Your income isn't going up doesn't mean prices aren't. 
and they there's a disconnect between logical thinking and and the and the policies that that this administration sells. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. Graham, you know, this was a typical speech uh, where Biden said he had his hand in writing it. And you can sort of tell it was (laughs) all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'd like to say kudos to you, Sarah, for managing to observe that people are scrambling for eggs. That's fantastic. (laughs) <laughs> um and uh scrambling for eggs uh, yes, uh, that's what, uh <laughs> nobody catches my humor <laughs> yes we do <laughs> i missed it <laughs> but uh yeah so going on well you know the whole speech was you know as far as i'm concerned is the only word you can use to describe it was was nonsense um <laughs> it, it, it was such a it painted such a an alternate reality that it that it was almost beyond comprehension. I mean, State of the Union speeches are, are you know, it's obviously a long tradition, and and it's getting it's getting somewhat tiresome. It has been somewhat tiresome for a number of years now, but uh, this one was particularly bad because it, it not just you expect a president at the State of the Union speech to tout their so you know their real or perceived achievements right. even though that's not the point of the speech really um but this one was particularly uh difficult because the all of the achievements every single one of the achievements he touted was either not uh was either something that was achieved before he became president or it's something that you know it's it's not really an, it's not really an achievement i mean basically if you um you know if you shoot somebody in the leg and then you patch up their wounds you can't take credit for making them feel better you know, <laughs> that's not the way it works um and so you know kind of uh, taking taking responsibility for for millions of jobs that have merely um been reinvented sure. since right. since pre-covid you, you know you can't say you've created jobs when these are people just going back to work and you know i could go on and on about that but that's that's andrew's field but but the whole the whole uh, economics section of that speech was complete nonsense he was wrong on or rather he was deceptive on every single term and what? You know, I don't blame, and and you know what, people. I just want to add one more thing. People talk about, oh, you know, well, the Republicans re- were booing, and okay, if we want to talk about disrespect, let's just remember that uh, you know Nancy Pelosi actually tore up Donald Trump's address. He handed her, which is traditional, you know, the the president hands the Speaker of the House um, a transcript of his address, and what did she do? She tore it up. So you know that. The, if we're talking about a level of disrespect from one to 10, you know, the booing is about maybe a five or a six. The tearing up of the speech was a 10. Well, I'm a- Graham, don't you think that it, you had to take some uh, some joy in the fact that for that moment of uh, reaction from the moments of reaction from the Republicans, it was definitely uh, Parliament-esque. And I, I really enjoyed that. Yes, it was. It was much more, you know, in, in, in the UK Parliament, uh, they tend to just yell at each other all the time and boo and jeer and, and you know, it's, a, it's very, very unruly. Um, so Canada too. A, Don't yeah. forget Canada. Canada has the exact same thing in the House of Commons. I thought, I thought you Canada, people are unruly Canadians in be, Canada. I thought Canadians were far too polite for that. I can imagine Canadians objecting to people's speeches by saying, Oh well, um, you know that's uh, that's um, that's a little strange. <laughs> They'd say rubbish. Rubbish. Yes. You yeah. know, I can, I can, I can, I can realistically say that any normal middle class or working poor person in the United States that listened to that speech was wondering, when's all this success, this beautiful rosy outlook? gonna finally trickle down to me and yeah. and they they know they're being they're being told a bunch of hoo-ha. well this is the unofficial start of his campaign what does that say i mean mccarthy was struggling to stay awake you could see his <laughs> eyes he was like you know doing everything he could to stay awake go ahead andrew 
I was going to say, uh, well, Pete Buttigieg, he was on uh, Meet the Press a uh, couple of days before the State of the Union address, and he was asked, you know, the polling shows that most people don't think that Biden is accomplishing anything. And then Pete Buttigieg says, oh, well, he's accomplished so much that it's hard to just present it to the public. You know, we're, the country is doing so well, know, you know, so, know. so you're too stupid to understand how great of a job we're doing. Well, we have to give the oldest president ever credit for having the stamina to get through it, even Trump on his uh, social platform had some friendly words to say about his successor. Thanks for tuning in to Liberty Nation and to C5, folks, and thanks, panel. That's it for our Conservative 5 panel today. Check out our other C5 shows and segments on your favorite video platform, YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble, we're on them all. As well, Liberty Nation has its own Roku channel where you can see all of our productions. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, surf on over to LibertyNation.com. Special thanks to our fantastic editor and post coordinator. He's a little quirky, but we love him, Frank DiOrio, and our executive producer, Sarah Calgill. I'm Lisa K. Donner, Editor-in-Chief. Thanks so much for joining us today. This has been a production of LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback.